How's it going guys? Welcome to another Miscellaneous Monday. Today, we are going to talk about some tips and strategies that led me to top the 2016 Architecture Licensure Examinations. Miscellaneous Mondays. Okay, so for those of you who may not know, I don't really mention this that much in my videos, but I was a top-notcher in the 2016 Architecture Licensure Exams here in the Philippines. I was actually lucky enough to gain the top 5th spot, which surprised me since I wasn't really the smartest person when I was in college. I actually failed a few of my subjects when I was in first year and then a couple more when I was in second year. Most of them were math subjects. Anyway, that's why I wanted to make this video, is to inspire those of you guys out there who are having a hard time at school and who are thinking about giving up and to prove that just because you suck at something at first doesn't mean you will suck at it forever. <laughs> Although I am far from becoming like a great architect, I am also nowhere near becoming a decent architect but I'm working on it and you know that's what matters, the hard work that you put in. Anyways, let's get on to the tips and strategies guys. First strategy that I'm going to talk about is my side hustle strategy when I was in school. Side hustle, yeah. So due to my failing grades when I was in the lower years, I got set back by two years. And I'm not saying that you guys also have to be delayed by two years to do this. But because I was delayed, that means I had a ton of free time during the day. Now, I could have spent that time playing video games and practicing guitar and, and you know, drums, which I actually did. <laughs> But some of my extra time I spent visiting some construction sites. And that's where I learned a ton of things. So if you guys have some spare time during the day, I highly recommend visiting construction sites. But you know, ask permission from the head architect or project manager first. And always wear protective gear when you're in the construction site, guys. Okay, second strategy is choosing a ghost mentor. Ghost mentor, yeah. Now, you might be wondering what a ghost mentor is and no, it is not contacting dead architects from the other side and asking them to mentor you. Although that sounds like a good plot for a movie. Ghost mentor coming to theaters near you. <laughs> I don't know what that was. This was supposed to be something spooky. Anyway, what I mean by getting a ghost mentor is you guys find an architect that you admire a lot. So for me right now, that is Bjark Ingels. <laughs> so dreamy. <clears throat> I mean... Such a great architect. Okay, now that you have chosen your ghost mentor, all you have to do is study their design styles, adopt their philosophies, and just pretend that they are your mentor. Every time you do a project, pretend that you are doing it for your ghost mentor. And I find that doing this really helped me understand what architecture is. On to our third strategy. So the third strategy is choosing an actual mentor. And this is the stage where you apply as an apprentice in an architectural office. Apprenticeship. So when I was applying as an apprentice, I actually applied to two architectural firms and by my surprise, I got accepted to both which made it pretty awkward to tell one of the firms that I will not accept them accepting me as an apprentice. That doesn't make any sense. I do not accept you accepting me into your firm. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys might say that I am an expert when it comes to applying. <laughs> not, not really. Anyways, I was super surprised that I got accepted because all I did was bring my architectural portfolio and a resume or a curriculum vitae, which brings me to today's sponsors, UpToCareer.com. UpToCareer.com is a great website that provides hundreds of templates such as resumes, cover letters, invoice templates, and calendars. I personally love their resume templates because back when I was applying at an architectural firm, I didn't have access to a resource like uptocareer.com and I had my own resume which looked very unprofessional and took a lot of time to make. <coughs> but with uptocareer.com, it just takes a few minutes. You guys get a ton of resume templates you could choose from. You could go from the creative look to the professional look or the classic look. <coughs> This digital bracelet thing is really something guys, it's super awesome. Anyways, not only that, <clears throat> you guys could also get some cover letter templates to complement your resumes. <clears throat> UpToCareer.com also has a ton of tips to guide you guys through. They have resume writing tips and cover letter tips to name a few. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
that's, that's timing stuff. So if you guys are interested in upping your resume and cover letter game, click on the link in the description below to subscribe for one month and get another month for free. So that's like two months for the price of one month. Yeah, master of math. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. So as I was saying, getting a good architectural firm to apprentice in is crucial since here is where you will learn a ton of real-world applications of the theories that you have learned in school. So when choosing a firm to apply in, make sure that you look at their architectural style and philosophies and that those match with your own styles and philosophies. So for example, you're into modern and minimalist architecture, go for a firm that does that type of architecture. Or if you're somewhat interested in creating high-rise buildings, apply in a firm that does those things. And while apprenticing, make sure that you balance work with learning. When I was an apprentice, I made it to a point to learn a new thing every day. Don't be afraid to ask your mentors or your seniors about things you are curious about. Just make sure your questions are about architecture. So, what do you think about the Star Wars prequels? Okay, now to strategy number four. This is probably the one most of you are waiting for. My board exam review routine. Review routine. So before I took the board exams, I actually took a six month reviewer course. Most people do this, so I don't think that was the reason that I topped the board, but rather it was what I did before and after review classes that helped me top the board exams. So every day for six months, I reviewed for four hours. I review for two hours in the morning and then two hours at the evening. So you guys might be wondering why didn't I review the whole day like I reviewed for 16 hours something like that well to be honest i just couldn't do it my maximum attention span is just two hours and after that my mind just drifts away to a land far far away like i always do in this video so you, you you guys always see me drift off into anyway i didn't see the point in forcing my mind and body to review the whole day i was just lying to myself so pretending to review is different to actually reviewing Although it may look cool that you are looking at your book for 8 hours straight and the other kids might think you're super smart for doing so, you're just wasting your time if you're actually reviewing for 2 hours and then spacing out the other 6 hours. So do yourself a favor guys and just stick to your maximum limit. So to determine your maximum time limit, get a timer and then time yourself. So first you try to review a topic and focus on this topic as hard as you can. Once you notice yourself and your mind drifting off and thinking about something like watching Full Metal Alchemist or something like that, stop the timer and record your time. Now, do this again in the evening and record your time limit at least 6 more times. Now, take the average time of your focus and now you know your study time limit. So this varies to some people. Others may have unlimited focus time, but for me, it was just a maximum of two hours. I find that not overloading my brain every day with a ton of information really helped with my memory retention. And I didn't really try to memorize things, I just tried to understand it. Usually, I took naps after studying. This helps your brain process the information you just ingested and helps you retain the information longer. Another thing I like to do was, I was going to review a bunch of stuff and then after reviewing it, I wrote what I could remember onto small index cards and sometimes onto any random piece of paper. And then I would go back to the review material and check the things I missed. So I do this because writing helps your brain retain information better than just reading it because of the physical motion and the writing and you know, it's, it's, it's just, it, it just is guys, you know. <laughs> also, get yourself a study buddy and try to explain to each other the concepts and things that you have just reviewed. So the simpler you could explain a concept or a topic means that the better you understood it. Also, teaching someone is a very good way to really learn something. And the last strategy is to just have fun while studying. If you pressure yourself and force yourself to study, your body will subconsciously associate negative feelings of stress with whatever you are trying to study. And this will cause mental blocks because when you try to access those parts of your memory, your subconscious and your mind will recognize the negative feelings that you associated with whatever you studied and your mind will just straight up avoid having to process information that correlates to your stress. So make sure to reinforce good emotions while studying. 
find a study group that is fun to be with or study with your friends and maybe eat your favorite foods while studying. And just remember that you can do this and you can ace this exam. And with that inspiring note, I guess I'll end the video right here. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below for more videos like this from me, your boy Lian. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys on my next video, which is this Friday, Flying Peace.